Who's this Dekidu, and why do all the pros want to adopt him? By 80s Gay Trash Goblin Chapter 18 Off to the Ball Alright, before we start, I do want to quickly apologize for not posting in so long. Uh, I'm a tax preparer, and this is the busiest time of the year, so... Uh, between technical issues, making uploads not go through the way they were supposed to, and... A hectic work schedule uh this is the hopefully this one uploads the right way but hopefully see you guys in the comment section today <laughs> anyways that being said let's go ahead and get into the chapter ua teachers and company 9 10 a.m Dekidu Chan is online. Dekidu Chan, please save me, Aizawa. I'm gonna die. Dekidu Chan, Pink Panther, Jacked Bugs Bunny, Falcon, Captain Jack Sparrow, Eraser Dad, Fus Roda, Anya Amasova, and Doctor Strange are online. Pink Panther. Kid? Jack Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Just give me a name. I'll kick their ass. Falcon. Ignore him. He's being dramatic. Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> About what? The Hero Gala. Oh. Dekadu Chan. I'm going to be eaten alive. Pink Panther. Kid, I'm sure you'll be fine. Dekidu-chan. Why can't I stay with Aizawa? Eraser Dad. Socializing will be good for you. Fusro Da. I'll be there, little listener. Dekidu-chan. I've been betrayed. Anya Amasova. It's the one day of the year that Sho can get a full night of sleep. No one can take that away from him. <laughs> Fusro Da. It's true. The one year I tried to get Sho to come, he punched me. How be. Anya Amasova. I'll be bringing my niece. I'm sure you two will get along. Doctor Strange. Every time I enter this chat, the grammar gets worse and worse. Dekidu Chan. Sasuke san, you will save me, right? Doctor Strange. From what? Falcon. The Hero Gala. Doctor Strange. Ah, unfortunately for you, I'm going with my psychics and my intern. Dekidu Chan. Angry face. Betrayal! Izuku grumbled, readjusting the tie again and refusing to look at the other two heroes. He'd much rather be at home working with sushi in his lap and in pajamas, but no. He had to be in a stuffy suit. Even if he did look good, and it probably could have been less comfortable. And in a limousine, riding with Keigo and Rumi to the Hero Gala. Keigo was in the outfit he bought yesterday, lounging with one wing tucked around Izuku. He looked like he just stepped off of a runway. Izuku knew the secret. He spent four hours before this just getting his makeup and hair perfect. He knew because Keigo also spent those four hours making sure that Izuku was also perfectly done up. Meanwhile, Rumi clearly didn't have the same qualms. The only improvement to her hair was that it was combed, and she was wearing a dark purple vest and slacks that looked like they just came off out of the closet and hadn't been touched for a year. 
She was wearing a white dress shirt with the sleeves rolled up to her elbows, and she was wearing the same silver sneakers that she always wore. Rumi told him herself that a few years ago, Kago insisted on getting her a good outfit for the gala. So she got the latest easiest option she could, and has been wearing it ever since. While Kago and Rumi were bickering over outfits, Kago was trying to convince Rumi to wear more bling. It was not working. Izuku slipped out of his phone, reasoning that even if he couldn't do work, he could at least check his email and get something done. A red feather snatched his phone out of his hands. Hey! Izuku shouted, lunging for it. Give it back! Nope. Keigo tucked the phone into one of his pockets. You're supposed to be socializing and having fun. No work. Come on! Just in the car? I've got things to do! Nope. Keigo used his wing to tuck Izuku in closer to him. If I'm using the gala as an excuse to procrastinate on paperwork, you are too. Wow, so responsible. Rumi deadpan, getting a middle finger from Kago in return. You're also procrastinating, Kago shot back, trying one final time in vain to comb Mizuku's hair. Seriously, where did he get the comb from? Izuku batted Kago's hand away from his hair. How am I the one... How am I the responsible one here? Excuse me? The term you're looking for is a workaholic, Kago said. And the term you're looking for is slacker. Rumi started cackling, full on smacking the empty seat beside her as the door opened. The butler looked very confused but said, Sirs, madam, we have arrived. Izuku started to sweat as he heard the sound of reporters clamoring outside. Keigo shooed Rumi out. Get out there! Why am I going first? Because you need to make us look good. Rumi rolled her eyes, but she winked at Izuku. She slipped out, and Izuku could hear her snappy remarks as she hogged the reporter's attention. Keigo turned back to Izuku wrapping an arm around his shoulders and pulling him close. Hey, you'll be fine. The reporters aren't broadcasting this live, and we filled out the form. They're not allowed to release your information or pictures. What about you? Don't you want pictures? Kago shrugged. I can always come back and rock the runway later. Izuku sighed. Let's just get this over with. The door opened and Keigo flaunted out, wrapping a wing around Izuku to shield him from the lights. Izuku tuned out the reporter's questions, only really registering Keigo saying, Ladies, ladies, I'll come back later, as they fled to the manor. Once they went inside, Izuku let out a sigh of relief. Keigo chuckled, and Izuku flipped them to the bird. Put your birds away. Kago said, covering Izuku's hand with his. Anyway, let's go find Tensei. I'm sure he'll know where all the cool kids hang out. Izuku grumbled, letting himself be dragged along. He swore he could hear Rumi laughing at him. Hi, Kago said cheerily, while Izuku let himself be dragged along, stewing in the misery of being outside of his lovely apartment. Were we late? You were five minutes earlier than usual, Tensei ribbed Keiga. Another teenager, who looked similar to Tensei, and who Izuku presumed was the man's younger brother, started chopping his arms, and said, That's still an hour and fifty-five minutes late! We were five minutes early? Shoot. Keiga pretended to check his non-existent watch, then started dragging them away. Come on, Izuku. We need to leave so we can come back and be properly fashionably late. Izuku started to thrash, mostly just playing it up because as much as he tries to deny it, he too is a dramatic bitch. No! I survived once already! 
I'm not going back in front of the vultures. Tensei was laughing behind them, and Keigo brought the two over to the table. There were a few kids there already. Izuku spotted a dual-haired boy with a scar over one side of his face, a girl with pink curls, and a kid with his teeth on the outside of his face sitting with the Idas. Keigo sat Izuku down at the table, who was grumbling. You're new. I haven't seen you at one of these before, the kid with the teeth said. I'm Honanuki Jizo. My uncle is Snatch. The pink-haired girl smiled, shoving some sort of skewer in her mouth. Hatsume Mei, future CEO of Hatsume Inc. Todoroki Shoto, the dual-haired kid said curtly. I'm sorry for not introducing myself, the smaller eater said. My name is Tinya Ida. I'm the younger brother of Ida Tensei. You're Tinya? I've heard a lot about you from Tensei. Izuku smiled. I'm Midori Izuku. It's good to meet you all. Are you the analyst my brother talks to regularly? Tinya asked. Izuku just nodded. That's amazing! He flushed, covering his face with his hands as Tinya continued to ramble on about how smart and great Takeru was. It's not that big of a deal, Izuku muttered. Wait, so you're Takeru? Hatsume asked, scooting over closer. Izuku nodded meekly. That's great! Be my business partner! Uh... Broccoli-chan! Izuku groaned. Everything was going on all at the same time. He slumped onto the table to hide his face from Kayama. Hello, Kayama-san, Tinya said. Hi, children. Izuku looked up. Standing next to Kayama was a taller girl with straight black hair who must be Kayama's niece. Kayama smiled, nudging her niece forward. This is my niece, Yayorozu Momu. Izuku waved. Midoriya Izuku. And? Izuku sighed. I'm also Dekiru. Yayorosu sat down next to Todoroki. It's excellent to meet you. Izuku smiled back. I'm glad to meet you too. He looked around, seeing that Kaima, Tensei, and Keigo were gone and breathed a sigh of relief. So, how did you become a famous analyst? Honoruki asked. No offense, but you're our age. Izuku shrugged. It's a funny story, actually. Keigo's wings tickled, and he smiled behind his cup as he heard Izuku ramble happily to his new friends. He heard a new voice then. It sounded like the American hero cow lady and her younger sister. He was happy that Izuku was finding friends. Are you still spying on Izuku? I thought he's doing fine, Rumi said, swirling her wine to war- Excuse me, Rumi said, swirling her wine around. She was being snarky, but Keigo could hear her concern. Not actively spying on them, just checking in once in a while, Keigo responded. How did you get a feather on him without him noticing? Nimiri asked. I hid it in his hair. He got Snickers in response. What? It's like a bush. You can hide anything in there. They got more serious then. How are the cases going? Tensei asked. 
No moves on the school district yet, Kago responded. Apparently, Nezu wants Izuku to help take it down as part of his curriculum. Nezu is still getting evidence for the lawsuit against Mustafu Public Hospital. Apparently, they're not cooperating. Namiri hesitated before leaning in. And Midoriya san? Kago shook his head. No new leads. Tensei frowned. Well, we're keeping an eye out at the agency. I know Mirai's looking into it too, although he's more focused on the Shie Hisaikai case right now. I was thinking of asking more heroes onto this case, Kago said. The more eyes looking for them, the better, right? Numeri nodded. I reached out to a couple of friends at Ketsubutsu and Shiketsu. Maybe they moved their operations out of Mustafu and over to another city. I don't know if them moving cities or just lying low is worse, Rumi muttered. Kago shook his head. Let's focus on getting more people on the case. They split up. Kago going to find a few heroes he recognized from working on other cases. Hopefully, the more people on board, the faster these villains can be caught. He doesn't want to find out what these bodies are for, for the hard way. You could do so much with your quirk, Izuku said excitedly, having, having rounded onto Yayorozu. Have you tried creating gases? Oh, what about if you make food for yourself and if you find if you find yourself running low on lipids? You said you can't create organic material. What about wood? What about... He stopped himself when he realized that the other girl was just blinking at him. S sorry I know I can go kind of fast. Please, don't be. She responded quickly. Your questions are very insightful. When I can understand them. I promise my analyses are usually a lot more polished than this. When I spend the time on them, instead of dumping my thoughts out. Brain dumping is an important part of the process. Hatsume shouted from her end of the table. The best ideas come from that initial rush of thought. The spark of inspiration. Yeah, but I usually save my brain dumping for the cat, and not to people's faces. Izuku rubbed his neck nervously. Sunatori looked up at that. Cat? She asked. Izuku brightened up. Yeah, I have a cat. Her name is Sushi. I would show you pictures, but I don't have my phone on me. Oh, before I forget... Yayurozu made a piece of paper and a pencil from her arm. Tsunatori, Midoriya, if you could write your phone numbers here, I could add you to the group chat for Hero Kids. Izuku muttered his thanks, quickly scrawling out his number and handing it to Tsunatori. She seemed to look a little relieved that the numbers were familiar to her and wrote her number down too. I can't wait to start making babies with you. Hatsumi shouted. Izuku sputtered as some of the table tried to hide their laughter, and the rest of the table just laughed. <laughs> she means her inventions, Hononuku explained through wheezing laughter. Uh, oh, okay. Izuku's face was still as red as he took- was still red as he took a bite of his food. That- that makes more sense. I- I don't mean to be rude, Tsunatori said, tilting her head a little bit. But is that a feather in your hair, Midoriya? A feather? Izuku asked before he groaned. Damn it, Kago! Kago yelped, feeling cold register through his feather at the and at the tip of his wings. There was only one person who could have done this. Damn it, Izuku! 
Izuku's eyes were gleaming as he rambled happily about Todoroki's quirk. So if you made the air really cold with your right side, and then made a little fire with your left, you could create a massive explosion. Please do not create explosions, a voice said dryly behind him. Izuku turned around and saw Sasaki standing behind him, with three teens standing behind him like ducklings. Hi, Sasaki-san, Izuku grinned, waving. And they're only hypothetical explosions. Sasuke raised an eyebrow. Like how the raccoons that have infested my agency are only hypothetically there? Izuku shrugged. With a sigh, Sasuke beckoned to the three teens to introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Tokuta Mirio, or the Million, and my mentor is Sir Nighteye, the blonde said, shaking Izuku's hand. Hi, Haru Nejire, or Nejire-chan, and my mentor is Ryukyu. Skipping the handshake entirely, the older girl instead pulled Izuku into a short hug. I'm a Jikin Tamaki, Sun Eater. My mentor is Fat Gum. The nervous teen responded. Izuku just gave him a short wave. He was clearly anxious. Matori Izuku, or Dekiru? Izuku smiled. You're Dekiru? Togata asked. Sir talks about you a lot. I'd love it if you could do an analysis. Of course! Izuku grinned, leaning in. What's your quirk? Togata went through a brief explanation of his quirk, and Izuku was off, hypothesizing in questions and theorizing. The words were less for them and more for himself as he talked through his thoughts. Wow, Hara said, her eyes wide. Do you do this for everyone? Izuku blushed as the entire table behind him said yes in unison. Sasuke rolled his eyes, patting Izuku on the shoulder. Save the analysis for later, alright? Just get to know each other. Togata pulled up a seat, the other two following suit. Would you like to know about my quirk? Hato asked. Izuku's eyes practically sparkled as he answered yes without hesitation. Keiko smiled as they were driven home in the limousine. Izuku was zonked out, leaning on his shoulder and snoring softly. Rumi was asleep across from him, although she was out because of the alcohol rather than the excitement of meeting new people. He was glad that the green bean had was making more friends, and he was glad that they had more eyes on, Izu on Midoriya Inka's case. His m mom's death hit Izuku pretty hard, so Keigo's happy that he found friends his age he could lean on. Keigo shifted, letting his wing drape over Izuku like a blanket. He'll be alright. Ooh. <laughs> that, like... Ooh, almost made me tear up a bit. That was so, so sweet there at the end. Holy cow. Um, okay. Chapter 19, Digging Up Dirt. Now, I will warn you, there is a minor spoiler in this episode in the form of a character. So, if you want to skip this chapter to avoid spoilers, I completely get it. She will pop up every once in a while, though. So, just keep that in mind. It's not a major spoiler, but yeah. Anyways, gonna take a drink real quick, then we'll get into the chapter. Private messages. Dekiru Tenetsu, 2.10 AM. Dekiru, can I ask a favor? Netsu, of course. 
I want to talk to Nagan. Nansu. The one in Tartarus? Dekidu. Yeah. I think she could help me take down the HPSC. Natsu. An admirable call. Let me see what I can do. Dekidu. Thank you. Natsu. Anything for my favorite human. Zuku has been acting weird. For one, he took the week off. Midoriya, I will work until I fucking die. Izuku took a week off. Second, he stopped letting Keigo in his room. Keigo will go into his room every now and again. He knocks if the door isn't open. But most of the time, it is to help put up decorations or set up furniture. But now Izuku won't let him in. Keigo was going to get down to the bottom of this, damn it. I'm going to see Netsu-san. Izuku shouted, a bag over his shoulder and running to the door. Keigo was lazing on the couch, pretending to be indifferent as he paged through his notebook that he was sent from UA. You got everything? Keigo shouted back. Yeah. And if something goes wrong... Scream and pull out the knife. All right, have fun. The door closed and Keigo sprung off. The textbook flung onto the table. He ran over to Azuka's bedroom, then stopped, frowning. There was a paper tape to the door. Do not enter, especially if your name is Takami Keigo. The door is locked and I will know if you unlock it. Keigo huffed. That sign won't stop me because I can't read, he muttered, kneeling down and pulling a couple of his more sturdy feathers from his wings. He started picking the lock when... Zap! His hair and his feathers stood straight up. Did the fucker just tase me? Izuku's phone went off, and he went to open it up. Ah, oh, what happened, Takeruku? Nezu asked, sipping his tea. They were in the back of a UA car, one of Ectoplasm's clones driving them to Tartarus. Izuku rolled his eyes at the notification. Keigo's dumbass just tried to pick the lock to get into my room. Oh dear, did you warn him? Yeah, I taped a sign on the door and everything. Izuku sent a text back to Keigo that just said, Told you, dumbass. It's not my fault if he decided to try anyway. Keigo just sent back an angry face. Izuku put his phone away, going back to sipping his tea. Are you prepared, Dakiru-kun? Netu asked. Izuku nodded. I have everything I want to ask written down in my notebook. I brought the audio recorder too. Excellent. I also brought everything I needed. Izuku raised an eyebrow. What would that be? Natsu just chuckled. You'll see, Dakiruke. It's going to be a few more hours until we get to Tartarus. Would you mind a game of chess? Izuku smiled. I would love a game. Lady Nagant was spending her day doing what she usually does, staring blankly at the mirror on the wall. Her hair has been cut short since her imprisonment, and she had a scar running from the bottom of her right eye down to her chin. She can't remember who did it to her. Time seems to blur together in Tartarus. She picked out an ugly orange jumpsuit. The name tag on it wasn't her name. Shinjitsu Ichika was the bright-eyed girl who had just got into high school. Lady Nagant was the defamed heroine who killed the former president. They were not the same person. Not anymore. How can a woman with blood on her hands call herself a hero? The shutter to her cell opened. 
and she turned to look at a pair of cork canceling cuffs passed through the small opening. She gra- she snagged them, dutifully, dutifully putting them on. It's not like she could escape. She learned her lesson pretty quickly. Being in prison was preferable to the outside world, actually. She didn't bother memorizing the way out. She was curious about who had visited her. The defamed hero didn't get any at all during her years of imprisonment. She sat down, cuffed to the table. There was a thin sheet of bulletproof glass between her side and the visitor's side. Two chairs pulled out. The only table in the room was hers. Likely, there was only one prisoner allowed at a time due to the high risk they all posed. Two people were led into the room, and Nagant tried to hear, hide her curiosity. One was Netsu, a strange creature that made a shiver crawl up her spine. She went to Shiketsu, but she heard the rumors of Yue's famed principal. The other was a teen boy, a pair of glasses on his face and his bright hair bright green like a bush. She vaguely recognized him from somewhere, but she couldn't remember where. Hello, Shinjitsu-san, the boy said, a notebook and pen in his hands. He was clicking it absentmindedly. Or would you prefer Lady Nagant? Nagant, please, she responded. Shinjitsu Ichika has been dead for a long time now. The boy nodded, writing it down. Netsu spoke up this time. I'm Nazu, I'm sure you're aware. This is my colleague, Dekadu, a hero analyst. I'm working on taking down the HPSC, he said, pulling out a tape recorder. I've collected some evidence, but in order to really take it down, I need your testimony. Nagant let herself smile a bit. She didn't really think her testimony would do much, but it's not like she's doing anything else. No help. Thank you. The boy beamed, and she let, felt like she was going to go blind at the pure kindness in it. He turned on the tape recorder. This is Midoriya Izuku, here with Shinjitsu Ichika, otherwise known as Lady Nagant, for her story about her time with the Hero Public Safety Commission. With me is Netsu san as witness. Nagant san. You can start now. She took a deep breath, then started to talk. After a long, grueling three hours, Dekiru finally stopped the recording. Thank you for your help, Nick Antsian. I truly appreciate it. Of course, she responded. He stood up, packing his stuff. Netsu remained seated, sipping his tea that he had procured from somewhere. She had stopped questioning it about half an hour in. Dekidu kun, you can go ahead of me back to the car. I have a few things I need to s- discuss with Nagantian. The kid looked between the two of them. Are you sure, Netsu san? The Chimera just nodded, and with a small frown on his face, he shuffled off. Nagant looked directly at the creature, a shudder going down her spine once again. She felt like she was being dissected. What is it you need from me, Natsu san? She asked, breaking the moment between the two of them. Natsu smiled. I would like to extend an offer. He slid a few pieces of paper under the glass for her to read. I understand that outside of prison, you would have had a hard time being hired, given your record and unique history. It just so happens that with the new year coming up, and with a few new hires, I am in need of more hands-on tech, so to speak. She skimmed the documents. They detailed a management position. Basically, she would be running around helping to make sure the school kept going. Deliveries, paperwork, grading more minor assignments, 
cleaning, tutoring help. She was basically an assistant that'll help wherever needed. And she'll be given a provisional hero license, so that she could use her quirk in protection of the students if she needs to. This is... She trailed off, continuing to shuffle through the papers. There was a page for her name change. I understand that the name Shinjitsu Ichika isn't well known, but you don't seem like the seem to like the name anymore, either. Netu said, sipping his tea. And I'm sure you don't want to be tied to the name Lady Nagant anymore. An opportunity like this deserves a clean slate, don't you think? It's not that I don't like the names, Nagant muttered, more thinking to herself than anything else. It's just that they're not who I am anymore. Netsu slid a pen to the other side. Then who are you? She thought about it. Vague memories of her time at Shiketsu came back to her. A long-term girlfriend, their relationship strong but ultimately couldn't survive the stress of heroism. A celebratory bonfire for 3 A's graduation. The last time any of them would be together before going out onto the field officially. A work study in Italy where she held a gun other than her own arms for the first time and was taught how to shoot by a woman she still thought of as a mother. She wrote down her name on the form. Tsutsuni Kaima. All right. Interesting development. Deku's going ham. <laughs> uh, but in all seriousness, I absolutely loved these chapters. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to read more, but it will have to wait till next time. Uh, again, I wanted to apologize so much for not uploading in so long. I'm going to do my best to upload when I can, but I can't make any promises for now. Probably not until the end of tax season. But I'm going to try and at least have one up a week, but we'll have to see how things go. Anyways... Thank you guys so, so much for coming and listening and hanging out with me. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Ciao for now.